All right, we're going to take another look at Playboy Group. This company is uh, giving us another opportunity to do some learning. Uh, this company announced a rights offering, and I'd like to thank one of my viewers actually uh, brought this to my attention. Uh, we've already talked about this company once before in video 120, where I talked about the corporate jet indicator. Uh, and so you can take a look at that video uh, if you like. Uh, different context here. But here, we're going to learn what a rights offering is, why companies do them, uh, how they differ from just a plain share issuance. And um, we're just going to take a look at the situation here. So you can see the stock is down a lot. Um, so we'll just take a look at the press release on this. And um, so the details here are the gross proceeds, if it's uh, fully subscribed, would be $50 million. And what's going to happen here is they're going to ask each of the shareholders, all of them, if they would like to subscribe. And the subscription gives you a right to a fractional share at a subscription price of 350 per share. And uh, so, for example, if you had 100 shares, you'd have the right to purchase uh, 100 times this, so 30 shares, 30.681187 shares at this price. So uh, that would be another $100 that you'd kick in. And um, this would be just basically you would be able to have the right to buy fresh shares. And then that money that you use as your subscription or that you pay as part of your subscription goes to the company. And um, we'll talk about why companies might do that in a minute. And then we're going to just look at some more details in this press release. So first of all, you know, this is sort of obligatory. The company wants to make sure that you know that management, like the chairman, is going to participate. And Ben Cohn, the CEO, he's going to participate. And Fortress, which is the private equity fund that actually brought uh, Playboy out, they have all each indicated to the company <laughs> on a non-binding basis that they intend to participate in the rights offering. And then we want to see what they use the proceeds for. This obviously should be in the press release. They're going to use the net proceeds for repaying senior debt and for other general corporate purposes, which is whatever they want to do with it. Okay, so that's the details on the rights offering itself. Uh, now we look here and we have a short interest of 31%. That's bad. Uh, although sometimes you get a, <laughs> you can have a short squeeze when this happens, but if they're going to be issuing fresh shares to the existing shareholders, uh, probably you're not going to get a short squeeze. And then we have a market cap here of only $118 million. So $50 million is kind of meaningful in the context of the market cap. In a minute, we'll look at the, the balance sheet and, and see what the situation really is, whether this $50 million means a lot or not. Um, okay, so... What are the, the nuances here with a rights offering? Why would a company do this as opposed to just issue equity like in a, a secondary offering? Um, so the bottom line is a lot of times a company might test the market and realize there is no appetite for share issuance to the open market. And so they don't have the ability to do uh, just a, a secondary offering of equity to the general public and to raise money that way. Also, they may not be able to go to the debt market, and we'll see when we look at their balance sheet, this company probably can't go to the debt market either. Um, and so what they do instead is appeal to the existing shareholders who obviously have an interest in the survival of this company. And it's a type of, basically a type of capital call. And, and maybe the analogy here would be like, think about say a law firm or a small accounting partnership, something like this where you know the firm needs some special capital for some special purpose. They don't want to issue shares to the public or a partnership to a fresh lawyer or a fresh accountant. They're happy with the partnership they have. And so they do a capital call of the existing partners. And if all the existing partners put up their own capital to fund this capital requirement, this uh, capital call, then everybody's equity ownership stays the same. Every, every partner has the same percentage ownership they had before. If one or some number of partners don't have the capital to meet the capital call, they don't have the, or aren't interested in meeting this capital call, then their equity issuance or their equity percentage ownership is gonna drop uh, proportionally, right? So, so a, a rights offering is sort of similar, basically. If every shareholder participates, then every shareholder will maintain the same percentage ownership of the entity. 
uh, but some shareholders may choose not to and then they're going to get diluted a little bit because they're offering fresh shares just to the shareholders that decide to participate. But it's a way to get capital. You go to very interested people, which are the existing shareholders, and hopefully you raise the money that you plan to raise. Um, now, I know of one really, really positive example of a rights offering, which was Ericsson Corporation. This is in the early 2000s, right after the tech crash. Ericsson did a big rights offering um, because they needed money. And uh, it turned out, I think the stock was maybe 3 or $4 a share. This is maybe 2002, 2003, something like this. And uh, they did the rights offering, got the capital they needed. They made it, made it through a little bit of a tight situation for, uh, for funding. And later, the stock went up something like 10 times. It was turned out to be a very, very good performance after that rights offering. Now, granted, Ericsson has not been a very good performer in the years that followed that. But there are instances where this, this can lead to a period of outperformance, um, but it may not, right? So in, in, in this particular case, I have no idea what's going to happen, and I'm not recommending this stock uh, for or against. But we're going to just take a look. I would actually like to walk through uh, some of the details that I'd look at to whether I might, if, if I were a shareholder, which I'm not of this company, but if I were a shareholder, would I participate? So uh, we already walked through what the rights offering, uh, you know, the details here, who was going to participate among management and the amount of money and so on. Um, what I'd like to do here is just let's take a look at their financials. This video is going to run a little long, but we can see here that, um, you know, this company is not doing that great. They're uh, negative on the operating line the last couple of uh, last couple of years trailing 12 months if we look at their cash flow statement it's kind of um, and, and again seeking alpha you can get really just good access to all the numbers for this company for for any company it's a great site um, if we look at the cash flow statement we can see uh, and I have the quarterly cash flow statement up here so September December and March it's sort of a few quarters ago don't have the most recent quarter yet um, but you can see they're burning cash, and uh, that's not so good. Cash from operations is negative. If we look at their balance sheet, we've got uh, cash and equivalents of $60 million. We've got, I always like to go down and take a look at the debt situation. So current portion of long-term debt is $2 million payable, $9 million in lease obligations, current payable. And then we have a total debt amount here of $214 million in debt. Uh, and then some capital leases of another $36 million. So call it you know, $250 million worth of debt. Um, that's kind of a lot for a company that's burning cash and is printing losses. Uh, and then what I like to do, we'll go to the 10K actually. And if you go to uh, the company's um, website you can have links to their different filings um, and here if you look at the most recent 10k page 83 you can see that they've got a term loan due 2027 so uh, they refinanced looks like they upsized the loan a little bit and so 2027 they've got most of this debt that we see on the balance sheet is due so it's not due right away um, but 50 million dollars is not going to make much of a dent in this, honestly. And really, if you look at their cash flow statement, it's not going to make much of a dent in their cash burn. Um, we go back to um, the cash flow statement and take a look. It's kind of, this company is in a pickle. It just does not look that good. So actually here, we look at uh, trailing 12 months um, cash flow statement. We've got negative net income of $300 million and cash from operations of a burn of $50 million. I mean, they're going to pay down debt with this. Really what they need to do is kind of deal with their burn. And so this is just, it's probably not enough. It doesn't really look like um, enough to move the needle. And so, you know, I basically would just wait. I think what I would do is wait, see how the rights offering goes. Um, you know, the stock, at least it's not plummeting. Uh, but when they announced this uh, rights offering, we had a decline in the stock. 
and uh, yeah, obviously this thing is down 90% year to date, you just never know. Sometimes a rights offering can uh, be kind of the thing they need to do to get over the hump, but I'd like to see them raise enough money to make a difference, and I would like to see a much less encumbered balance sheet. So, uh, and, and a company that's actually making some money. Um, so, you know, I, I don't know. This this is sort of a dodgy situation, but what we've done here is we learned a little bit about what a rights offering is. I would probably not participate if I had to decide if I were a shareholder. I wouldn't participate in this rights offering, but I hope they make it, and uh, you know, we'll see how it plays out. But uh, that's what a rights offering is. They can go well, they can go badly, and uh, we'll see how this one plays out. And I hope these videos are helpful. Thanks for watching.